R-A-Y-A. That is correct. <laughs> Last night, history was made for the first time ever in the Scripps National Spelling Bee's 96-year history, an African-American took home the top prize. 14-year-old Zayla Avant-Garde, an eighth grader from Harvey, Louisiana, won this year's Spelling Bee Championship by correctly spelling the word Mariah. I don't even know how to say it, let alone spell it, which is a group of tropical, Asiatic, and Australian trees. The only other black champion that Spelling Bee has had has been its only international winner, Jody Ann Maxwell of Jamaica in 1998. But winning the Spelling Bee isn't Zayla's first victory. She already holds three Guinness World Records in dribbling, bouncing, and juggling basketballs, which she's accomplished all before the ninth grade. And her father had her last name changed to avant-garde in tribute to jazz musician John Coltrane. But why has it taken so long to get an African-American winner in the spelling bee? Well, when you really dive into the history of the spelling bees, a 13-year-old African-American girl from Cleveland, Ohio, actually was the first national spelling bee champion, and her name was Marie Bolden. Back in 1908, Bolden competed in the National Education Association's first national spelling bee in New Orleans. And now, uh, not only did Bolden defeat her white competitors, she won with a perfect score. Marie's victory made national news, but because it was 1908, not only were celebrations not permitted, the event caused an uproar in New Orleans which still lived under Jim Crow's racial separa separation laws. The next official national spelling bee, the one we watch these days, would not be organized again for another 18 years. Joining me to discuss is senior writer at The Root, Michael Harriet, who wrote a very long but very interesting Twitter thread on the remarkable history of Marie Bolden's win. Michael. How are you? First of all, what is happening in the water around New Orleans? So the first winner was in New Orleans. Harvey is right outside, right across the river from New Orleans. Is it, is it a New Orleans thing? It might be. Uh, you know, New Orleans is one of those places where it's such a great cultural mix. And it just might be that, of course, you know, as you see from the history of the spelling bee, that so many African-Americans are usually excluded from the spelling bee historically that, you know, first time one broke through is always in New Orleans. Well, first of all, there were so many fascinating t historical tidbits in your, your uh, tweet thread. One is you know, that people had bees for all sorts of things, you know, like there was a corn husking bee. Uh, so, so this was just, you know, having these sorts of competitions around all kinds of everyday things was a thing. Yeah, but, you know, one of the things about the spelling bee competition was it was kind of a, a fad back then. But the first spelling bee, the one that Marie Bolden won, was like a big thing. It was, you know, the New York Times said it was bigger than all of college sports. There was no NBA or NFL uh, back then. Baseball was segregated and, and there was no radio to listen to it on. So this was a huge thing. It was, probably would have been on ESPN if ESPN would have existed in 1908 because it was a huge national sto story. They had it in a coliseum with 6,000 attendees. So M Marie Bolden wins this thing. She beats everybody. She has this perfect score. She spells every single word right. Talk to us about this severe reaction to her winning. So, so the reaction, pretty, it started before she even attended. Uh, you know, the school board of New Orleans had a meeting where they said, you know, I mean, what are we gonna do if they, we let this girl compete? Most of the people who were, schools that were competing were segregated, but this one school from Cleveland wasn't, wasn't segregated. So she was on the team. It was a team competition back then. 
And they say, well, first of all, there's no way that a, uh, a black girl is going to make a team. Come on, let's be for realistic. And then they said, well, uh, they literally said this in the school board meeting. We'll just kill her if she, if she shows up. And she showed up. And she got a perfect score. She was one of three people who got perfect scores. But because her team also scored higher than all of the other teams, she was given the gold medal and declared the individual winner. And her team was the team winner of that first national spelling bee. So how did they stop them from celebrating? That, that, that was a fascinating piece of it. So, so again, it was such a big deal back then. Like, you know, I, I imagine if it's like a Super Bowl parade, right? So the black uh, community in New Orleans rented a fairgrounds to hold a party. And they were going to also have their own spelling bee because, again, the black kids couldn't compete in the spelling bee. And they, it was approved. And after Marie Bolden won, the city council snatched the permit away, they said that they were preventing riots from happening. Because you know, Charles, how we always riot after every spelling bee, you know, after every spelling bee, I, I watch, man, I just wanna go buck wild. So, you know, they had to prevent that black rioting from happening. You don't flip over uh, cars every time they lose a spelling bee? <laughs> almost every time. Sometimes I, I manage to control myself. <laughs> but okay, so, so so that's the history of it. But 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 there is a very long, nearly a, a century long uh, spread where there is no black winner. So this, there is you know what 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 happens during that period? Like this is an extraordinary thing, even though there was a precedent of someone else winning a previous betting league, right? Right. So what you see uh, throughout history is first of all, it takes a lot of time and effort to win a spelling bee. And it takes materials. There's this book, it's not, you don't just read a, a dictionary. The scripts uh, spelling bee puts out a, a, a big pamphlet or a book with all of the words that are in the competition. And you have to learn how to spell those words. Well, I mean, if you are in a segregated school, which didn't just exist in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. They still exist. Most black children attend segregated school. 60% of black children in America attend highly segregated schools. Um, so you have to have those resources. You have to have the time. You have to have teachers who aren't stressed out uh, and underpaid and have the materials to teach this, uh, teach you how to compete in a spelling bee. And so what we've seen is that you know, the majority of the winners for the past 20, 30 years have been homeschooled children. You know, we like to think of it as, you know, uh, racially brown children, but most of these children are homeschooled. And that's what the kind of effort you have to put in to win a spelling bee. So it's kind of remarkable that this girl is out there setting records and dribbling better than I can. I'm, I'm thinking about signing up for her. Uh, basketball classes, and she's breaking records, and this is enough spare time. She's the best speller in the world, right? Like it's it's amazing that she did it with a regular person's, uh, you know, a schedule. But like, well, not even a regular person, an extraordinary person's schedule. Because I ain't dribbling in my spare time. Well, listen, listen. I, I I was a pretty decent basketball player. I was a horrible speller, and my mother teased me about it the, the whole time. It still does to this day. Because he said, I don't know how you're a writer because you can't spell anything. And, I, and my first spelling bee, I got out, out on the word, sure, I swear. I blanked on it. But anyway, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.